So we made it to 2023. So in this video, I'm going to give you three things that you need to focus on to make sure you get the most out of your music career for the year. So stay tuned. Beauty is relevant. Jarrell King here, aka Relevant, multi platinum music producer, music business coach, man of God. And first and foremost, welcome to the channel. Thank you for watching. If you've never been to the channel before, make sure you hit the like button and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel and it helps other people uh, find out more about these videos. So we made it to 2023. Happy New Year. Um, 2020 was a great year for me. I hope it was a great year for you as well. And if it wasn't, that is why we get to start all over and do it all again. This year, let's make sure that we're doing things with intention. And that is exactly why I'm making this video for you today, because I want you to get the most out of your music career um, starting a music career can be full of challenges obstacles and things that uh, can get in the way of you reaching your goals and that is why I'm here to help you achieve those goals so the first thing you should be focusing on in 2023 is knowing exactly what your goals are you can't get anywhere if you don't know where you want to go so when it comes to mapping out your your career and, and like your income goals or like your stream goals or fan base social media Whatever it is, if you're trying to get a record label to find interest in you or a manager or whatever it is that you're looking to achieve when it comes to your music career this year in particular, you have to have that goal in mind and then you need some type of plan to actually be able to measure your uh, progress in reaching those goals. So the best way that you can do that is by using SMART goals. So some of you, some of you may have heard of SMART goals before. If you haven't, it's a very popular way of tracking your progress when it comes to goals. And the word SMART serves as an acronym. Uh, and I've seen it be used in different ways, but for the most part, you can see here it's specific. The S is for specific. M is measurable. A, attainable. R, relevant. And T, time bound. So it could also be time frame, time sensitive. Um, but ultimately, when it comes to the S, you want to be specific with your goals. There's no reason to be vague at this point. Now, when it comes to your goals, all of your goals aren't going to be uh, achieved in one year. You have to have short-term goals, mid-term goals, and long-term goals. So right now, because we're focusing on the year 2023, that is going to be a little more between short and mid-term goals. So when you think about what you actually want to achieve within the next 12 months, be specific. Do you want to reach a certain amount of streams? Do you want to reach a certain amount of fans on your social media or followers on like Spotify or anything like that? Um, and then once you have that specific goal, is that goal measurable? Can you track that? So again, if it's a numbers based thing, like say you want to hit 20,000 streams this month, um, can you measure that? Which you can because it's a number. So um, that's the M. Uh, attainable is 20,000 streams possible is that something that can be done you don't want to create a goal that's too far out of reach now it is good to always have big goals you don't want to sell yourself short but it's easier to reach a lot of your goals when you break them down into smaller goals uh, just a little bit out of reach so that it does make you work for it and you do have to stretch for it but at the same time you don't want to give yourself a goal that is so out of the ordinary or so big that it discourages you from thinking that it's even possible. The R is relevant. So how is that going to contribute? Like, what, is, what does it actually mean? Is it, is it in alignment with what you want for yourself? Does that goal fit the ultimate brand or long-term goal that you are looking to actually achieve? It's also a shameless plug because that's my name. So uh, how could I pass that one up? And lastly, uh, time bound or time frame. So you want to, because we're talking about 2023, that's the time frame. But again, it doesn't have to be the full year. You can do things from a 30 day standpoint. You could do things from a 90 day standpoint or, um, you know, half six months, whatever you want to do. Just make sure that when you're mapping out these goals, uh, you have a time frame in mind on when you would like to hit hit them. And that also goes back to the measurable measurable part of the smart goal, which is making sure that you can track it and in, in what time frame are you tracking it. So for now, we're sticking to the year 2023. It is January, so we have 12 months for you to reach those goals and you should be able to measure those goals 
by each month that passes so that you can know where you're at the closer and closer you get to your goal or if you aren't as close as you want to be then you can see that you're not as close as you want to be and from there you can make any type of adjustments to make sure that you are able to uh, keep it on track or catch up so that you stay on track with the goals that you're looking to achieve so the second thing i want you to focus on is your personal finances and i often often try to tell new musicians how important it is for them to Make sure that they have a very good understanding of what's going on when it comes to your personal finances. Now, I know you may be thinking, oh, I hate dealing with money. I know a lot of people get uh, a little kind of weird when it, when it comes to finances and money. Some people get uncomfortable talking about money or um, get embarrassed or anything like that or get discouraged because they might not be making what they want to make. But this is the time for you to actually pay attention to your personal finances because it all starts there when it comes to you generating income and running a business. If you can't manage your own personal finances and manage your own life like a business, then you won't be able to manage your business finances either. So you want to start those habits early. Um, and since it's the beginning of the year, it's the perfect time to start a new habit. They say it takes about 21 days to start a new habit. So that's three weeks. So let's just focus on having good, healthy financial habits um, when that comes to saving, uh, budgeting, investing paying off debt monitoring monitoring expenses and uh, being mindful of what it takes to actually uh take care of yourself as a person because again you are the business you as a musician are the business so you have to make sure that your finances are operating smoothly and if you aren't in a place where that is happening then it's going to carry over into other parts of your music business so if you aren't uh, financially able to save or budget or anything like that when it comes to buying equipment or or going on tour or paying for marketing all of it is eventually going to bleed into other areas and it's going to be more difficult for you to overall get to where you want to get to because there will be a bunch of just confusion going on with everything from the begin with so you want to just start with making sure that you have a clear understanding of where you are in your own personal finances before trying to branch out into having business expenses and, uh, and separate business finances. So one of the things that I want you to do is check out mint.com. Uh, if you have heard of mint, then more power to you. If you haven't, mint is a great place for you to just start with having a very good transparent way of monitoring what's coming in and what's going out when it comes to your finances. So here you can see mint is actually owned by Intuit. Intuit also makes QuickBooks. They also make, uh, or they own Credit Karma, they own TurboTax. So it's a very uh, popular, trustworthy website. I don't have any type of affiliation when it comes to Mint. I don't get paid for telling you guys this. This is just one of the first websites and apps that I started using when it came to my own personal finances. This is what this allowed me to uh, connect my bank accounts and then also create budgets within my bank accounts so that as I was making money rather even if i was just working a regular job even if i wasn't making that much it was still allowing me to see what was coming in have budgets for all of my monthly expenses like groceries phone bill rent whatever it is and then also have my own personal investments rather it be stocks or a savings account or um anything like a 401k or our uh, roth ira ira whatever like all of those things can be connected all within this one platform and it gives you a full robust uh transparent way to track all of your monthly expenses without having to be some financial guru or someone who isn't really comfortable when it comes to numbers because i know a lot of musicians tend to uh shy away from the business side of doing things especially uh again finances because it's a touchy subject so instead of having to go get a cpa or like ask somebody what to do uh, mint is rather straightforward again they do have an app so it makes it that much more uh modern and easy to track and it's very simple so um you can go ahead and dive in this is just a home page you know it could change between when you watch this and now but create an account connect your accounts to it and get started with making sure that you're budgeting and you're being responsible because as you save money you're going to have to start investing some of that money into your music business again rather it be um, equipment studio time buying beats getting songs mixed uh, buying merch or stuff that you want to sell uh, or anything in regards in regards to any of the expenses that can be uh, related to you being an artist 
it all starts with you having your own personal finances in place. So sign up for Mint.com, uh, get started there, and uh, if you have any questions about it, you can feel free to ask me, but I would always recommend get on YouTube, same way you found me, and watch videos on Mint. I don't work for Mint. They have their own company. I'm sure they have plenty of tutorials that teach you how to use it. You can always reach out to customer support and ask them questions as well. Number three, make sure you guys are registering your songs with the right places so that you are getting the royalties that you should be generating and earning when you are making these songs and they start generating streams. It makes zero sense for you to put all of this effort, time, money, money and energy into your music and not be compensated for what's properly yours. And the way that happens is by artists not making sure that their songs are properly registered with all the right platforms so that your royalties are actually being tracked and also being paid out to you quarterly when royalties are typically paid out. So first and foremost, if you haven't signed up for a performing rights organization, also called a pro, do that first. Uh, the most popular pros in here in the United States are ASCAP and BMI. There's also CSAC, which I'm a member of, and CSAC is invite only. Um, so make sure that you are at least signed up with ASCAP or BMI. And one thing I have to have to highlight and, and emphasize where a lot of artists mess up is they only register as one entity. You have to register as both a songwriter and as a publisher. If you're a music producer, you're also a songwriter because you're writing the music. But you have to have both. You can't just do one. Now, you can, when it comes to picking between ASCAP or BMI, you can sign up for both as a publisher. But as a writer, you can only be registered with one or the other. So get on ASCAP.com or you can get on BMI.com and you can go through. Uh, both of them have fees. Uh, or At least at one point, ASCAP was free. ASCAP, I believe, still is free, but BMI does charge and they, mo they might both charge for publishers. Um, you'd have to double check. Sometimes they change and uh, the fees will also change. Um, they've only gone up, so the sooner the better, but get on the website, ascap.com, bmi.com, sign, uh, sign up as a writer, sign up as a publisher, and make sure that when you are releasing new music, you also register the songs with your pro, because this is where they are going to collect your performing, rights royalties so this is uh where you're going to start making money from your songs as they start to stream performing rights is usually uh, anything that's on the radio anything uh that's performed live so if you do live shows uh anything that might be synced so like tv film um those are all places where your music is going to generate royalties and you want to make sure that those royalties are being collected and paid out to you so you want to register for ascap and bmi after that, you also want to register with Song Trust. This is another uh, royalty collecting um, platform. So here's an example. I'm glad they actually have this on their website. This is perfect. So you see on the left, they have your pro, which I just explained what ASCAP and BMI is. So they, they collect your performance royalty. So you can see here in blue, they have performance as half the pie. And on the other half, they have your me mechanical. Mechanical is typically your publishing royalty. Uh, usually you need to be uh, signed to a publisher for your publishing royalties, your mechanical royalties to be collected and paid out to you. Um, if you're not signed to a publisher, that's a different story, but there are platforms that offer publishing deals such as um, TuneCore. Um, so TuneCore and CD Baby both offer uh, publishing administration, but uh, there's usually a little more qualifications required for you to get uh, your publishing administra administration services offered to you. They usually want people who have um, some music that's out there actually doing some numbers, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. Uh, here with Song Trust, you can see they actually track both. So you can get your performance royalty tracked and paid out to you and your mechanical royalty paid out to you. So that is what makes uh, Song Trust that much uh, of a valuable resource for any musician releasing music is because if you only register with your pro, you're only getting half the royalties paid out to you versus if you register with a platform like Song Trust, you're getting both royalties paid out to you. So this is both your performance royalty and your mechanical royalty, which again is your, your performing royalty is like your composition royalty. So like a copy or a songwriting composition. Um, and then your mechanical is your publishing. And whenever you put out a song, a song is always two parts. There's always 50% of a song is the composition 
which is again the, the songwriting the, the lyrics and the melody and then the other 50% is the mechanical which is based off of the master recording um, and that is there are two separate royalties so you have to make sure that's why I said when you sign up for ASCAP or BMI you have to do both a songwriter and a publisher because they are two separate things that both pay you a royalty and many people overlook the publishing part and only sign up as a writer and they miss out on half the money that would be paid to them because of that one simple mistake. You also want to make sure that you have a distributor. Uh, DistroKid is one of the most common, simple, easy to use distributors that you can use to release your music on all streaming platforms. But they too also will allow you to um, track the splits of your song. So if I were to actually sign into mine, they off also will have you register your songs within the platform, specifically the splits, so that they know what streaming royalties to collect for you so if i were to go and look at oh uh, let's see all right you hear it for example these are songs that i've been included on they weren't songs that i released myself but these are songs that uh, i've been included on as uh, someone who owns a percentage of the songs and you can see that the people who release these songs one ss flows the other turbo t double uh, you can see that i own 18 percent of this song 10 percent of this song and 50 percent of this song of martian and uh, these are songs that these artists released themselves and they gave me that percentage and within distro kit itself whenever royalties are earned from these songs being streamed distro kit will automatically split the royalties based off of what the percentage is and pay them directly to me without having to go to the person who released them and then them pay me my royalties so that's a perfect example of making sure that you do the splits properly when you are releasing a song through your distributor and making sure that you actually do your splits because sometimes people overlook the, how important the splits can be and believe it or not there's always a time where people forget who was on the song or forget how much someone contributed to a song and it can cause a lot of problems and many many artists have ended up in court because of lawsuits because of people saying that they earned more or did more work on a song or were left off a song that they were a part of and it's messy and it's not something that you ever want to deal with so to save yourself the headache make sure that you are doing your splits properly uh, you want to be good at doing business good business goes a long way you want to have good ethics when you are doing business with people because the music industry is small and people will find out that you do shady business and they won't want to work with you anymore so and the last one that I want you to check out is sound exchange Sound Exchange is great for your royalties that are uh, anytime your music is played on any type of, any type of uh, extraterrestrial radio. So uh, like Siri, Sirius XM or like XM radio or um, any type of digital streaming platform, maybe like YouTube or uh, international platforms. Sound Exchange is tracking all of that as well. And you are missing out on royalties if you are not registering your songs with sound exchange because again if your song is playing on something like pandora um or any type of xm radio or any type of digital platform like a youtube or um something along those lines then that also is a royalty in itself and again if you don't register the song how will they know that it's out there and if they don't don't know that it's out there how are they going to pay you for it so, so there you have it there are three things that i want you to focus on for the rest of 2023 to make sure that you hit all of your goals so that you are building the music career that you want for yourself so that you end up living the life that you have planned and have always dreamed of uh, so again if it's your first time here and if you like that video make sure you hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and if you have any other questions about anything regarding to your music career or things that are going on in your life that can help you get closer to your goals feel free to leave a comment below uh, you can also shoot me an email and if you really need somebody to talk to to help you really just put together a plan and help you reach your goals because you still struggle with certain things like what your sound is or the type of music you want to make or don't have a producer or don't understand the business aspect of what it takes to be a musician then feel free to click the link below that also says book a call and you can book a one hour session with me and i'll walk you through anything that you're struggling with to help you get the career that you want for yourself so again thank you for watching this video and again happy new years i'll see you guys soon